So let's check in with the franchise. CP, the franchise, joins us now. CP, good to see you. Uh, with teams able to speak with free agents from other teams Sunday at 6 p.m., like we said, Isaiah Hartenstein is probably the most pressing issue right now. We know he's going to get paid and how important he was last year. But just how far should the Knicks go to try to bring him back? I think the Knicks need to do everything they can to bring back Isaiah Hartenstein. He, he was vital to this Knicks team. Number one, from a durability standpoint, when Mitchell Robinson went out, Isaiah Hartenstein stepped in uh, admirably at the starting center position. Mitchell Robinson missing 50 games. And Isaiah Hartenstein, when he came in, the Knicks did not skip a beat. And they also took a step up offensively. The Knicks were a much better team offensively with Isaiah Hartenstein. They outscored opponents by seven points per 100 possessions when Hartenstein was in the game. Their effective field goal percentage also went up. He's a guy that you can run offense through in the pinch post as well as the elbow area. His defense came around over the last two years for the Knicks and he, he was a vital component here and I think the Knicks will do everything they can to keep him, but he will have better offers out there. So for Hartenstein, it's going to come down to, does he want more money for shorter years or will he take the long-term stability and stay with the Knicks? I think we'll find more out more on uh, when free agency kicks off. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it would be a huge loss for the Knicks if they can't bring him back, but he's definitely earned every ounce of a big payday from what he showed this past season. Uh, as they keep adding players and salary CP, Julius Randle's future is looking more and more cloudy. He is extension eligible, but almost due, also due almost $29 million next year. How do you think things will play out when it comes to Julius Randle? I hope it ends well for Julius Randle and the New York Knicks. Uh, this, is, this will be a prove-it year for him, but make no mistake, this will be the best Knicks team that Julius Randle has ever played with. So the sky is the limit for the potential in, in him in this starting lineup with the addition of the Cal Bridges and, and playing with OG Ananobi more. But for Julius Randle, it's going to come down to heading into the playoffs healthy for the Knicks and being able to contribute on both ends for them. Can he space the floor for these guys if the ball is not in his hands as much? How will he impact winning from a defense and rebounding standpoint? He's going to need those things to be successful with the Knicks, and I think he has a great chance to do so. Yeah, and he is eligible to sign an extension for up to four years, $181.5 million, according to ESPN's Bobby Marks. Uh, CP, last one for you. Given the Knicks' limited resources, what's a move you would like to see them make when free agency gets going? Well, since the center situation is, is in flux, the Knicks will need to look there to find some insurance in the event that Isaiah Hartenstein goes elsewhere. A guy like an Andre Drummond, could he return home uh, to the New York Knicks? They've also been linked to Goga Biktaze, a defensive and rebounding center, free agent from the Orlando Magic, Jalen Smith. Is another player to watch. He's recently played for the Indiana Pacers. If Tom Thibodeau opts to go with a more veteran leadership at the backup point guard spot, maybe Amante Morris becomes available. Recently played for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Kyle Lowry is another name that has been linked to the Knicks based on his Villanova ties. Maybe even a Chris Dunn who played for Tom Thibodeau as well. So those are some of the names I would look out for. As you said, the options are a little bit limited based on the amount of money that they will have to spend. But this is already a deep Knicks team. They just need to shore up the back end of the rotation.